We are now packing up from Willits and headed to Benbow KOA. Who wants to see the river? We're at the Eel River, which is just walking distance from our campsite at Benbow KOA. We're in Humboldt County now in a town called Benbow, which is right outside Garberville. We didn't even know there was a river here. We came down a little hill and everything suddenly turned to sand and all of just fell to the floor and started going <laughs> with the sand. And it looks like you can go wading in the river. These ladies are trying to have a peaceful wading session in the river, but we're interrupting that a little bit because our girls are going, look, I see her butt. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for two nights. Tomorrow we go stay right near the Avenue of the Giants, which is a destination that both Papa and I have really wanted to come to. What did you find, Maple? Black ones, black berries, raspberries. Yum! They taste like food. They taste like food? That one looks perfect. Mm. We could put them in a smoothie. Can I do it? I wish for I love Papa and Mama and Olive is so cute in my whole life. <laughs> Look, what letter is that tree? A U. A U? Y. Is Y a vowel or a consonant? And sometimes Y and sometimes Y. A-E-I-O-U. We're packing up from Benbow KOA and we're headed next to a town called Myers Flat. And we're excited about Myers Flat because that campground is supposedly right on the Eel River. So uh, we had so much fun at the Eel River outside of Benbow. We can't wait to see what it's like at Myers Flat. Well, it's definitely true that a lot of things are a little bit harder now that we're traveling around in an RV during a pandemic. Uh, but there are some things that are actually easier, and one of them is uh, playing with other kids is just not on the table anymore. So I don't have to navigate that w mostly with Lyndon, because normally Lyndon wants to play with everybody who comes by and ask them to go in their RV and all sorts of stuff. She has no boundaries. So it's been kind of a relief to just have the blanket of social distancing over everything, and I don't have to have any power struggles with her about it. at Giant Redwoods RV Park this afternoon and it's a little bit different pace from what we're used to so far on this route because we've been staying at KOA's and this is our first time veering into the private RV park. Yeah, I wonder what lives in there. Ants. Ants? That's an interesting way to eat. Mm -hmm. I'm a dog. You're a dog? Mm -hmm. Where are we going right now? To the river. To the river. To the river. Well, it turns out the river is right in our backyard. We just walked a very short distance and came upon the river. I couldn't see it from up there, so I wasn't sure, but it's literally right here. So we're gonna be able to swim anytime we want over the next couple of days. We're definitely at the best campsite in the whole campground. It helped that we got here a day early and we drove in and we got to scope it out and basically pick the prime spot. We're here for four nights and there's no sewer, so we're kind of in boondocking mode in the sense that I'm really conserving water. You know, I'm not really doing dishes. I'm doing like the paper towel wipe down, spraying with vinegar, stuff like that. Right now the girls are playing with Papa in a big mountain of gravel. They don't really need toys. If there's gravel or dirt or rocks or sticks or plants, that's really all they need. It's a new hole. No, it's Clifford's poop. It's Clifford's poop. We drove about 30 minutes to go drop off laundry today. And that was fine because the girls were napping in the car. It was kind of a warm day. So we wanted to take a air conditioned nap drive anyway. But Michael and I had the chance to talk about our route and what exactly we want to get out of this Pacific Northwest trip. Our anxiety has been a little bit heightened while traveling around in an RV during a pandemic. But in some ways, it's actually less stressful than before. We can't really be doing anything else anyway. The kids wouldn't be in preschool right now. Lyndon wouldn't be starting kindergarten. It's made it a little easier to just let go and be in the moment right now. 
It's like I'm free from expectations. I get to see life through a clearer lens and that's a gift and I'm really grateful for it. Okay, I'm sitting at the Airstream alone trying to talk to the camera. It's kind of hard, so it takes me a while. But I'm hearing water pouring from something out of there, so I, I better go see what it is. I have never opened this bumper. These pins hold it in. I've always wondered how to open this bumper, and now that I see it's leaking, somewhere the air conditioner is uh, condensing, which is normal, but it's instead collecting here and then just basically dripping through some of these parts. Let's see what's in here. Kind of need both hands. So I guess it's good news that no water is in there. But there is water dripping down from down here. Somehow it's getting here from what I presume is the rear AC. Mama, come on, let's dip our feet in it. Look at Tadpole. Well. Right down there. Oh, look at the little fishy. Oh, oh no. Um, We're not swimming right now. Look how sandy it is. Oh, and she wants to wash her butt. forgot everybody's shoes when I was packing up today. So we're going on a barefoot hike. Of all places to forget their shoes, I guess this is a really good place because there's not much on the ground besides fern and sorrel and soft dirt. The redwoods are protecting the ground from anything too spiky. <laughs> There's a heat wave right now, so it's about 102 at our campsite. So we decided to go for an air-conditioned nap drive up to the coast. And on our way back, we drove by this place called Founders Grove off Avenue of the Giants amidst all these redwoods, and we just parked and jumped out, and it turns out it's a perfect little hike for us. There's plenty of parking right by the trail and there were a couple of rangers there to welcome us and they even gave the girls coloring books and explained to them some of the rules, which is don't pick up the sticks. The sticks are supposed to stay on the ground. So that's kind of hard to explain to Olive, but the other two are getting it. Uh, what did you find? Now I know what trees look like inside them. Look, Papa. Mom, that's a lion. It is? Oh, no. It looks like maybe a dragon breathed on the inside of this tree. Why? Look at the look at the wall. There's breathed. no such thing as and dragons. Breathed. For this route, we're headed north up the Pacific coast. And we're kind of taking our time. We're taking it slow and leisurely. And we're even going ahead to scope things out before we move the Airstream in some cases. So today we decided to drive up to Eureka and Arcata and scout out the location to see where we might want to stay as our next stop for the Airstream. Well, it's true that playgrounds are closed now and children's museums are closed. Everything's a little bit different for us on the road with three such young kids, but coming to a place like this makes none of that matter. Well, I'm so glad we decided to just pull off the side of the road here because who knew that we, we were surrounded by so much beauty. This is the perfect place to be during a heat wave. There's a breeze coming through and it just, it feels really nice. I'm in a tank top and shorts and it's just perfect. This is the tree that this grove is named after, so this is the big attraction. When we got here, we walked right past it because there were lots of people here. We don't always need to see the, the attraction that we're supposed to be looking at because our kids are at an age where we're always surprised by what's actually really interesting for them. Are you going to make a vlog? Yeah. You could say, today we're at the Redwood Trees. On Happily Family, we're on the Redwoods and the Family Logs. Well, things are 
are changing just our family dynamic as the kids are getting bigger. We used to revolve everything around nap time, you know. Nap time is when I'm gonna get everything I need to do done. Nap time is the only time we can drive. Stuff like that. Now it's not like that. And Lyndon doesn't even always nap every day. And the other thing that just happened at this campsite last night for the first time, we decided not to put up the baby gate around the Airstream. We're in such an ideal site and we love all the stuff like just a little bit out of reach of our campsite. There's no neighbor. There's another little park right across the little street. It's not a crowded campground, so there's no cars driving around. Oh, there's a, like a badminton field over there. There's, there's all sorts of great stuff that we wanted the kids to... Whoa, you're okay. So I'm not saying that we're never going to use the baby gate again, but for this campground at Giant Redwoods RV Park, we don't need the baby gate and it's been really fun and really freeing and the kids are having a blast just kind of roaming around. So now we're all covered in dirt, but that's the perfect excuse to go swimming at the river. Pancake? I got sailboat. Okay, a smiley face, Lyndon, is that what you want? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Did I do good? Good. Okay, the sign said, keep children close because mountain lion are especially drawn to them. Yike. What are mountain lions? Mountain lions are lions that live in the mountains and they like to eat children. But don't touch it because yeah, money is totally full of germs and we're having a pandemic. I'm so torn. <laughs> I see $10 on the trail, I just want to grab it. And also someone might want to come back and get that. But also it's litter. All kinds of ethical dilemmas here. I know, what do I do? What would you guys do if you were walking on a beautiful trail in the middle of nowhere like this and you see a wad of cash on the ground? Just take it. Why? Because I love money. <laughs> Why do you love money? Because I want to buy rings or something. Rings? I would buy laundry with that. Maybe we're on candid camera. I think we're going to leave it because one, the person who dropped it might come back for it. Two, maybe somebody else who really needs it will walk by and find it. Even before the pandemic, laundry rooms were always kind of a challenge because with three little kids, they don't want to sit there and wait while you're doing laundry. So what I've been experimenting with is finding wash and fold laundry service places where you take it in, drop it off, and they wash and fold by the pound. But there's pros and cons to that. The pr one of the pros is that I don't have to do the laundry. That's really nice. The con is that we have to kind of know that we're gonna be somewhere for at least a couple days because we have to give it time to, to get done. And usually that's an overnight process. And another con is that it's, it's more expensive than doing laundry yourself. So we're open to the idea of finding something portable that would go in the Airstream or the van. I get a heart? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I do get a heart. That's redwood sorrel. That's really sweet, Lyndon. Hmm, it tastes like apple skin. Lyndon, what is this? A broccoli tree. A broccoli tree? What is your species? What is your species? Human. My species is human. Rockefeller Forest Loop Trail is 0.5 miles. That way or that way. That's just our speed. 0.5 miles is the perfect hike for us. Yeah, yeah the hole. Yeah. That's where the broccoli tree used to grow. Imagine being here when one of these falls over. That would be crazy. Like an earthquake. Yeah. 
Well, it makes you feel kind of small because the trees are just so massive and tall. And you know what was funny? What you said in the car, you felt like a flea on someone's scalp in between all their giant hairs. What's Olive doing? Are you pooping? Laying down, are you pooping? I thought that hike was just perfect. It's really good hike for kids. And it was completely empty besides us. It was just a perfect afternoon activity for us. We had to take this little secret road that we whizzed by the first time because it's totally hidden. If you're not looking for it and going really slow, you won't see it at all. I lost my light last night, so I had to continue today, and the girls just had a mad scooter session down the street. It's a pretty fun place to do scooters. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or not, but it makes a terrible crunching noise. And so I think that's probably past its prime. I did manage to fit a few leveling and chalk devices in here, so that frees up some space in the back compartment. There's these, uh, sort of unusual pins that are meant to hold the drawer so when it slides in this hole lines up with the hole on this bracket or at least it's supposed to oh i got it yeah that's that was not an easy maneuver i did realize where the water was dripping from the air conditioner it's normal for an air conditioner compressor to condense water on it and vehicles are designed to have water run along the outside of them. It's not a big deal. And here you can see a little bit of uh, mineral deposits from its, how it's been dripping in the past. And then it drips all the way down and, and what it was doing is just working. It's once it hits this trim, it would just run to the bumper just because we happened to be slanted backwards a little bit. And then it found a way to drip down here. So I think that's just normal operation. What's Olive doing? I was eating spaghetti. Maple spaghetti. Maple spaghetti. You you eating maple spaghetti? Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. Who's in there? There's a little hand in there. 